Yo, what is up, G Crew? I'm Chris G, bringing you guys another video. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing on what video editing software I use, and that software is Premiere Pro. So, without further ado, guys, let's get started. So first thing you're going to want to do is open up a project and then you title your project and select where you want to put it and then you end up being on a screen similar to this. So just so that we're on the same page, you can go to window, go to workspace and just go to all panels and then it'll adjust your panels accordingly to whatever you selected and all of them will be put so that way you and I can both look at the same exact screen so that way I can point out uh, what panels do what. As you can see, there is a top left section, there is a bottom left, there's a timeline, this is the viewer area, and then here is the info, along with a bunch of other tabs um, that you'll be looking at. So also notice that there's learning, assembly, editing, colors, effects, audio, graphics, libraries, that's a mouthful. But each one has its own set of, uh, of workspaces, so that way uh, it's the most efficient work area or working environment on the computer. So if I go to color grading, you'll notice that there is the color uh, limitry effect that's on the right side so that you can manipulate with it. And I'll get in more detail with all this other stuff because it's going to start getting very confusing. But for right now, let's just start with the basics and I'm going to show you guys how to import a photo or not a photo, a video. We're making videos here. I'm going to show you guys how to import videos onto your computer into this project and then edit it accordingly to whatever you want and then export it so that way you can show your friends or family or whoever you want to or if you just want to watch it by yourself you can do that as well um, but yeah let's get started so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the editing title so that way we can just be on the same page and we're going to go to import media at the bottom left so there's two ways or three ways you can do it actually there's one way where you can just double click in there and then you can go to whatever whatever um, stuff you need to go to or you can right here right next to where it says Premiere Pro project you can right click it and import I always whenever I watch videos I always like I hated it when someone said oh just double click there because then there's gonna be a point to where all your stuff is gonna be filled up and there's gonna be no place to double click so you can do that or you can hit control I and you can also import things as well that way as well so that's multiple ways you can import things and yes you need to know multiple ways because trust me shortcuts are the best so importing that and then we'll also go to um, the projects for me and then whatever the case is for you guys and I'm gonna go to YouTube and I'm gonna go to my intro to Premiere and I'm gonna select these files um, just a select few I'm gonna open them and what it's gonna do is it's gonna put it onto the project and it's gonna be beautifully displayed and easy to work with. So you'll see right here that it's already got everything sorted out. And so pretty much what you wanna do is you just drag onto the timeline and it's already in there. And you'll see that in the viewing tab, uh, or the viewing panel, sorry, uh, you'll notice that it's perfectly there. And then what I do, since this is like a B-roll sequence, I don't need the audio from my room because I was the, like jamming out to music. So we do not need that at all. So I'm gonna delete that by just clicking it and then here, Control Z. If you ever do something on accident that you didn't mean to, just hit Control Z and it's a lifesaver. It's just, it's a backspace pretty much, but it's like you're rewinding time, which is amazing. It's like you're time traveling, but as a video editor, it's amazing. Anyway, so I select the audio. I don't want it, I'm gonna hit delete and it's as simple as that, right? So we can skim through, I'm gonna let it play out. And then you'll see, you know, there's a lot of shaking to it. Um, so there's certain parts that I would want to cut and keep in the clip. So for example, just to make things uh, nice and short, I'll just stop it right there. And I'll come over here, continue playing it out. And then let's say I want that. So I'm gonna come to the end of this clip and also drag here. And I'm gonna put this clip at the very beginning at zero seconds, so that way it starts that way. So another thing guys to realize is, um, there's different tools that do different things, right? So this one is a selective tool. So that's gonna let me do what I just did there. If I have the um, the slicing tool or the razor tool, sorry, um, it won't. I won't be able to do that. I can only cut clips like this. So it pretty much just cuts in half. So that way you can split it or whatever you need to do. But Control Z to undo what you just did, like I said earlier. So it's important to learn these tools, guys. There's a text tool. There's a hand tool, pen tool. 
and a bunch of these I will get in more detail. I'll probably make a video on tools specifically, um, a bunch of other things like the timeline, how to read it, how to understand it, what's that yellow line on it, um, a bunch of different things. So I'm just gonna kind of like not rush through this video, but I just want to be very simplistic for you guys that way y'all understand it. And that way it's not too complicated because I know it can be very overwhelming, especially for those of you that are just starting out. So. That's my first clip, and I'm gonna go to my second clip. So this first clip right here is just showing that it's on the timeline. So I'm gonna go to 610, import this, hit delete, and then I'm just gonna find, you know, whatever I want. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna just keep doing this. And um, yeah, that's pretty much the process of it, guys. You just gotta find where you want the clip that you recorded. Of course, the reason why you wanna trim is simply for the fact that you don't want to um, when you have, whenever you have a camera, right, you hit record and then you start getting your shot. You don't want the, the part of the video where you hit record and then you position for the shot. You want it to be already positioned at the shot, getting whatever motion you're trying to get. Um, that's the importance of trimming. So a lot of times um, there's different video editors out there that are kind of lazy about it and they just want to, they record it and they just put it in order and that's it. It's done deal. They don't want to like worry about the stabilization or anything like that. And that's cool and all, you don't need to stabilize your shots 100% all the time, but you do want the part where you hit record and then you position the camera. And you want that part out of the out of the, out of of the the video because it's just not gonna look good, especially since, let's say I'm looking down at my camera, I press record and then I look up. Some people leave it out there, believe it or not, you'd be surprised. So anyway, kind of went on a little rant there, but that's that's just, uh, that's how it goes. So. so pretty much, again, you just click on the audio if you don't want it. And I'm just skimming through here, <clears throat> sorry. And uh, yeah, you just trim it. And then another thing too is you'll see on the effects control panel, that does a lot of things as well. So for example, at the start of this video at zero seconds, if I were to, let's say I want it to be invisible, right? If I, if I wanted it to be blank, I can go to the opacity here, make a keyframe by putting it to zero. You'll notice right here, there's a keyframe going on. And it's this little diamond, so I'm gonna uh, zoom into it. And that's the keyframe right there. So I'll move it out, you can see it right there. If I put it at, um, here, on the, if I put it right there on the timeline, you'll see it's equally right here, there's two different timelines. Uh, this one's for the keyframing. So I'll put it to 100%, and you'll notice that um, it made another keyframe. So in between it, if I go halfway, it's like at 50%. And it's like, it like you're telling the computer, from point A to point B, I want it to be at 0%, and then at point B, I want it at 100%, and then it makes its way up there. And I can get way more in detail with the keyframing, guys, but that's just a little short um, description of what keyframing is, and it pretty much just makes it look a little bit better that, that way. So whenever you're like starting a video, it makes it a little bit more cinematic. So um, that's that. So now that you guys know how to like import stuff and uh, cut and trim, that's pretty much what you're going to be using most of the time. A lot of the times I'm going to be teaching you guys um, what you're going to be using, um, for this video at least, what you're going to be using um, more frequently than others. Like the tools that I use is definitely the selective tool, the razor tool, and also the rate stretch tool. Uh, rate stretch tool. Try saying that three times. Rate stretch tool, rate stretch tool, rate rate. God doggy. Okay, uh, you try that and let me know if you can do that in the comments. So you come over here and you can see there's a rate stretch tool right here. All you have to do is press R and um, and it just gives it to you instantly. So sometimes you'll notice that it kind of, in the toolbar, I can just switch from different tools here without actually having to move my mouse and going towards it. And that saves a bunch of time, uh, believe it or not. It's, it's like if you're gonna work on a, building a little backyard warehouse, you know, and you you're you know you're hammering something and you got to switch tools imagine if you had the power to just like instead of like having to reach down in your tool bag and then like switching your different tool you could instantly just like switch it with the snap of your fingers and you just have something else in your hands that's exactly what you're doing here so you want that to happen in real life but you have the opportunity here and you don't use it why not so go for it it's very easy all you got to do is memorize some of the key um the key shortcuts that you're going to be using so V is definitely for the selective tool. Uh, R is for the rate stretch tool. T is for the text. Uh, C is the razor, and etc. The P is for the pen tool. And the pen tool is made for masking. So if ever you want to mask something out, 
Um, that, that'll be like whenever you want to take something out of the shot or import something in and you just want that specific area. I'll get more detail with that in a future video on masking. I definitely have a lot, uh, I have a long list of videos I want to make, so yeah. So anyway, let's say you're happy with this and these, are, these three clips are exactly what you want. So I'm going to play it and I'm going to see, okay, cool, cool, exactly what I want, right, example. And then um, it's missing some music. So what we'll do is we'll import some music here and um, I'll go to my music tab, the music, and I use Epidemic Sounds, so I'm not sponsored by them. Definitely go use them. They're amazing. Um, from what I've heard, they're amazing people too. I don't know, but um, I, I wouldn't doubt it. So the song that I use for the beginning is called, it's called Sub-Zero, almost forgot. Oh. Okay, so I'm gonna import it here. And we're just going to use, let's say, alright, so we'll use the part where it's, where the like, drop hits or whatever, or the bass drops. So this tool right here is very useful, so like if you want to zoom in more so you can see better, um, definitely use that tool. So right here is where the start is, so I'm going to use my razor tool, select it, and then cut it there, switch to my... Um, selection tool and then select this and delete it so that way I just have that and then use this right here to zoom back out bring this to the beginning put this at the beginning of the timeline and then say it stops right there so perfect I'm gonna turn this to the very end of it and now I want it to stop right there so I'm gonna use the cut tool or the razor tool sorry and then cut it there Get my selected tool, select that part, and delete it. So that's so much faster. So that's our first video, guys, that we made together. Um, super easy, but now we gotta learn how to export it, which means just like taking it out of the project and making it an actual video for you to see on your phone, YouTube, anywhere you want it, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. So all you gotta do is come right here. If you were to export it right now by using Control M, it would actually um, export the whole timeline. We don't want that, so I'm gonna hit cancel. And what I mean by the whole timeline, is a timeline right here is super super long and we don't need it to be that long it's literally almost 12 minutes so all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here zoom in and make an in point meaning the start of the video and i'm gonna make an out point which is gonna be over here and hit oh one thing i did forget to mention that i've been doing this whole time is if you're trying to like get an exact point let's say i want to get to start right here instead of like going really slow all you have to do is hold shift and it starts it right there boom if i want to Go at the beginning right here, it'll just snap. Right there, perfect. Easy peasy, let me squeeze Um, So that's how I got the exact part right there. So you hit O right there for the out point, meaning the end of the video. So you're telling the computer or the project or the, the software, I want my video to start right here and I want it to end right here, you know? So you're making two points, again, kind of like keyframing, but not really. You're making two different um, points. I mean, it's, it's simple, I'm pretty sure you get it. If you don't, let me know in the comments and I can try to help you. Um, I'll, I'll respond as best as I can. And um, who knows, I may make a video answering your question. So don't be shy. On All right, so I'm gonna pause it real quick just because I just realized that I couldn't show you guys how I exported it. I thought I did. Long story short, my screen recording OBS thing did not work the way I wanted it to. Um, it didn't record all of Premiere Pro. So a lot of the things that we're showing you uh, that you guys didn't really see the screen of that's the reason why and I just thought I could just skim through it and just have my face be in it but you really can't know how to export without the actual footage of the screen so I'm gonna record the screen on my camera just so that way you guys can see it so yeah sorry about that I know it's gonna be like weird quality but yeah let's just get on with it so what we're gonna do here is we're going to go over here oh I need to lower the ISO those of you that don't know what that is you can go check it out on my other video I'll probably link it in the description or something. But yeah, so we're gonna go to file up here. And remember, this is after we make our in and out points. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna go to export and we're gonna go to media. If you don't wanna do that, you can just use a shortcut, control M, and that'll take you to this panel right here. And this panel is gonna be overwhelming because there's a bunch of words and I know it looks crazy. All you have to worry about is right here where it says out point, um, output name. You're gonna click it and you're gonna select where you want it and you can select the name of it. So then that's all you gotta do. You don't have to worry about anything else. I'm gonna hit cancel because I'm not actually gonna export it. And um, yeah, other things too, in the video panel right here in the video tab, 
All you have to worry about as well is the render at maximum depth. You don't have to do that if your computer is pretty slow um, and you do go decide to do this, it's going to take a while. Same thing right here with uh, using your maximum render quality, it's going to take a while for your computer as well. But it's fine if, it, if you're willing to risk, or not risk, but if you're willing to wait, you know, go for it for that better quality. Um, everything else you don't really have to worry about just because this is a very simple uh, simple video, but yeah, so without further ado guys, let's continue the video. Oh, and uh, before I forget, and then you just hit export and then you're done. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comment section below. Hopefully you learned something new, and um, I know you guys are probably super lost with my teaching skills, but I'm getting there. I know it's kind of all over the place, but the main objective of this video was just to show you guys how to import something, how to put things together um, with the audio and the video as well because obviously you don't want to just have video and no sound because sound is half more than half of the video because your ears are more sensitive than your eyes, believe it or not. Anyway, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I post video editing tutorials and I used to post drumming videos, so if you haven't checked those out, be sure to do so. I have some later down and I have a playlist of my drum remixes and whatnot, but I've been talking too long guys. I need to go eat because my mom is making food and my dad's barbecuing outside. So yeah, without further ado guys, peace.